Hello and welcome to chapter 20, Conventional Energy Alternatives. So basically, uh, this video we're going to go over three pretty basic conventional energy alternatives, uh, and in 21 we're going to look at some more innovative ones. But for now, we're just going to look at those three. Okay, so uh, the three alternatives that we have here, we have nuclear, bioenergy, and hydroelectric power, all of which we've talked about before, but we're just going to go over them today as well. Okay, so first let's take a quick look at nuclear power. So this image is actually pretty telling. So you have these reactors here, and you have these creepy smiley faces. And so that kind of does show how it's a very two-sided issue. Some people are very for nuclear power, and some are very against uh, for different reasons. Both have uh, some ground. Uh, so the first thing we're going to take a look at is the differentiation between fission and fusion. So uh, I think of fusion is putting together, and fission is breaking apart. So basically, uh, nuclear fission is when you split the nuclei um, in half, where you just split it into pieces, and that's basically where you generate the electricity and the power from. Fusion is when you force together uh, nuclei, and that basically is what happens in things like hydrogen bombs. So fission is where you get the power. Um, so there are some main issues with nuclear power that people have, uh, the first of which is accidents. So we all know the examples. We have Three Mile Island, Chernobyl, and even very recently, Fukushima. So basically, because it's so toxic and dangerous, um, when uh, terrible um, accidents occur, the site's going to be radioactive for like basically the rest of time. And so uh, it's something to take in con into uh, consideration. Say you put a nuclear reactor in a very populated area. If something goes wrong, that could devastate uh, the entire area. So that's uh, one of the issues. Uh, the next issue is uh, storage. So... Since it is radioactive material, everything that touches the reaction uh, is going to be radioactive. And so the fuel rods are really the main problem. So currently, uh, in temporary situations, they're stored in basically huge pools of water, but that's obviously not permanent. And so um, people are thinking maybe you can put them into mountains and then just have mountains full of them that nobody touches, but really uh, there's not any clear, decisive answer yet. Okay, now let's take a look at bioenergy. So think corn or really any organic biomass as a fuel. So just as uh, nuclear power has its pros and cons, bioenergy does as well. So basically a pro is that it's a renewable and uh, fairly efficient energy source. And the main con would be that it hurts soil systems. Uh, basically it just takes the, all the organic material out of what would be in the soil systems, replenishing and remaking the soil, so obviously that's going to be an issue. Um, another problem is uh, corn and ethanol. So government uh, recently has been giving subsidies because ethanol is required to be in our fuel, as we discussed earlier. Um, and so there was like a huge influx of farmers growing corn because they were given subsidies and they were selling it very, very, very uh, quickly. However, the problem is that that completely destroyed the market price of corn by inflating the market. Um, and so that's another con. We have to figure out more efficiently how to deal with the corn market if we're going to use bioenergy as a viable source in the future. Okay, next let's take a look at hydroelectric power. Basically, this is think of a dam. You're uh, using kinetic energy from flowing water to power things. Uh, so there are some potential issues with this as well. Uh, it does destroy ecosystems because you're just destroying an entire aquatic system. Uh, even if you have fish channels for the fish to go through, it's uh, an unnatural cycle. So people are obviously going to be against that in some capacity. Um, but this is actually widely used in some countries such as Sweden. I believe it's about 10% of their power is from hydroelectric energy, which is pretty substantial. Um, but really, none of these three are going to be huge uh, future resources um, compared to, like, say, wind or solar. So that basically brings us to the conclusion. Very short, quick video. Um, so as I just said, um, these are kind of feasible alternatives to fossil fuels. However, they need to be refined, but they are a solid base for the future of alternative energy. So again, think wind, uh, solar, things of that nature. Okay, so in chapter 21, we're going to take a look at those uh, wind and solar type alternative energies in the new renewable energy alternative section. All right, thank you and see you next time.